I mean, you, you see already that the concept of the paper, the scientific paper, is eroding before our very eyes. There used to be a, an object that had an introduction and results and an experimental section, and you'd look at the experimental section, and this was full of really important detail. And up front, there was this little thing called an abstract, and that was almost incidental. Papers now are, in a sense, extended abstracts, and everything else is somewhere else. You know, the entire rest of the paper has been put in what we used to call supplemental, but now with everything electronic, it's not quite clear where the useful information is. But I think the, and that, let me say, I think this is all to the good, because if you have to read a very complex set of words, many pages of stuff in order to figure out what's going on, then you're not likely to do it. There are just too many of these things around to make, make it worth the effort. So to the extent that we can find ways of taking scientific results, abstracting from them the thing that is most important, and then making that clear with all the rest being supporting detail, terrific. But there are some changes that I think are bigger changes along the way. I don't know how people are going to read when they're, as we have presently evolved, when there is no paper. You know, PNAS and Science and Nature still are paper-based journals, and I happen to like paper, but many of the ACS journals don't exist in paper form. And I think the interaction between the author, the journal on a screen, and paper is just going to be fundamentally different. But even more interesting and serious are, are things like, well, video. And I increasingly find that the stuff that we do that has probably the greatest impact in some metrics is done in, in video format, not in paper format. So, for example, I've done a couple of TED or TED-like talks in the last period of time on subjects that we do our research in. Paper diagnostics and simplicity were the two that were interesting. And if you look at the number of downloads of those, either from the TED site or on YouTube, they're much larger than the number of citations than we would ever see in scientific journals. And that means that there are just lots more people looking at the videos than would ever read the paper. Now, it's a different audience, different purpose, different set of circumstances. Well, if where you were was everyone was doing science that was really catchy and justified it, you'd have be in a wonderful situation because the world of science would just be exploding. But in fact, what happens, as we all know, is that there are occasional papers which open doors and are new and do neat stuff. And then there's a lot of work, which is also extremely good work, which develops these ideas. And the first experiment might be really neat and catchy, but it typically doesn't solve any really big problem. Uh, it requires development at the level of science, and then development at the level of engineering, and then further development at the level of commercialization. And you know, this is a process that goes on for a long time. It is annoying when you find a paper with what has obviously um, been painted to be a breathtakingly new result, which is basically just the same old stuff, just painted a slightly different color. But you can usually figure that out in a very short period of time, and you just skip over. And then, at least I tend not to read that author's papers again very seriously.